The Revel M105 bookshelf speakers are a speaker that's got some really great science and heritage behind them, but come in at a pretty affordable price point based on their specs on paper. I've been able to put these up against my Harbeth P3 ESR XD speakers, and I have to say the battle was a lot tighter than I was probably comfortable with given how much more I spent on the Harbeths. The M105s have a list price of $1,650 US per pair, and don't be tricked by the fact that if you Google these, you may find them listed for half that price. The reason is these are a speaker that's often sold individually so that people can put together a SAS around sound system with maybe four of them. But the expectation is to spend about $1,650 US if you're looking for just a pair like I was. What you're getting for your money is a two-way bass reflex ported speaker and a speaker that's using a one-inch aluminium dome tweeter within a waveguide system, a five and a quarter inch aluminium domed woofer that's also ribbed for extra rigidity. Those are coupled up with a crossover at 2.3 kilohertz. And they're listed with a bass roll off that's going to hit about minus 3 dB at around about 60 hertz. Of course, that's going to depend a little bit on the room they're in, exactly how the bass performs. In my room here, I find the roll off realistically starts to kick in at about the 70 hertz mark. And so to be at minus 3 dB by 60 Hz does sound about right. Their sensitivity is listed at 86 decibels, so they're not a particularly sensitive speaker, but I can drive these fairly comfortably from amplifiers like my Linear Tube Audio MZ3. And so in that sense, for a near field setup, I'd say they're a sensitive enough speaker, if not a really sensitive speaker. But again, that's in a near field setup where the speakers are no more than about a meter away from me, so it could be a bit different in your particular system if it's in a larger room. Before we talk about the sound, the final things I'll mention is that they're a really nice solid design. They look and feel quality. I've got them here in the piano black finish. They're also available in a high gloss white and also a walnut finish. And you can see the drivers here, but they do come with this magnetically attaching grill that pops on like so. And so they're a relatively stylish, if conservative looking speaker. They've got this nice section of soft touch up on the top of them here, which is both a mixed bag. I like the fact that it's kind of giving some differentiation to the shape and the size of the cabinets. What I'm not a fan of is that these soft touch materials often hang onto fingerprints. Once you touch them, the oils of your skin get in the slight texture of the soft touch material and it can be really hard to clean off. So it's kind of a mixed bag, but I do like it overall. As I mentioned before, these tweeters are mounted into a waveguide system. So there's some contouring to this section near the tweeter and also the grill that's on front of the tweeter. It doesn't look particularly premium. I tend to leave the speaker grills on most of the time because I don't find it a particularly attractive looking speaker. But theoretically, that is going to improve the sound. So I'm going to take Harman's word for it because that's actually something I haven't mentioned is that these are coming out of the overall Harman family of products. So Harman, as in Harman Kardon, is a large corporation focused on producing audio equipment, doing research, etc. And Revel is one of their brands. And these are very much kind of a scientifically designed speaker as I understand it. They've thought about all the things that should make for a better sounding speaker. Things like the ribbed drivers that I mentioned before is to prevent any kind of breakup of the driver. There's also some special technology built into the way the magnets are set up around the voice coil to make sure that as that voice coil moves, there's consistency in the magnetic field. You've got this waveguide for the tweeters to help disperse the sound and make them less directional and therefore hopefully make the off-axis performance better in terms of imaging and staging, etc. And so scientifically speaking, the tuning, the design, the performance of these speakers should be very, very good. And that's why, as I said at the beginning, I was excited to try them and a bit nervous to try them based on the price compared to other speakers like the Harbeth, for instance. Before I tell you the results, let's finish off with just a couple of details about the design. The other thing I should mention is that we've got a pair of binding posts on each speaker. They're not designed for any kind of bi amping, as you can tell, but the binding posts are good quality. And then finally, we've got our port in the back here. And this does mean that you're not going to want to put them too close to a wall. 
and it can also result in a sound quality that's very common for any kind of bass ported speaker. And we'll talk about that when we get to the comparison between the sound of these and the sound of the Harbors, which are a closed box design. Before we get to that though, let's talk about the sound of the 105s all on their own. First up, I ran them with no DSP applied, just to get a sense of their natural tonality, but do keep in mind that the performance of any speaker is also going to be a function of the room that it's in. Now my office here isn't a particularly well-treated room. I've got some sound absorption for things like mid-range reflections of sounds for when I do these recordings, but I don't have any bass traps and I haven't optimized the room for speaker sound. Placing these on my desk on a set of ISO Acoustics isolation stands and connecting them up to the Burson Timekeeper 3 XGTs being driven by the topping D70 Pro Octo DAC, and what I heard from them was a sound that was a little bit thick in the mid bass, but that's largely from my room, I already know that to be the case. However, they also produced a treble that was a little bit unnatural. It wasn't bad per se, but I found the quality a little bit unnatural. And that's not from my room. My room's not too bad for the treble, it is bad for the mid bass. The imaging without any of the DSP applied still was quite good, but not great. And specifically what I found was that the image was a bit smeared left to right. I wasn't getting a really good pinpoint sense of where the vocalist was coming from. As I moved around a bit, I felt like the off-axis performance of them was strong. But having said that, it was strong starting from a pretty poor bass. And in other words, what I mean is that because the image was already a little bit smeared left to right, the quality and the focus of that image didn't have very far to drop away. And so as I did move around, it stayed about the same, but about the same wasn't great. Having said that, it's important to note that this is all without DSP applied. I'm sharing this with you to create some context of how these might perform if you put them in your room, if your room's not ideal, and don't apply any kind of correction. And there's multiple ways that we can correct for sound. You can treat the room, you can use DSP, you can do a combination of both. And by the way, if you're a beginner to the hobby, DSP is just digital sound processing. It can be things like EQ, timing correction between the two channels, changing the volume levels of the two channels if needed. So any of those things can help to improve the sound of the speakers, because in most cases, any room you put them into is going to affect their sound. And so what's more important for me is how they sound after some correction is applied. Now, as I said, my room is very moderately treated and not really for speakers. What I tend to do as a bit of a compromise is to balance out their frequency response using a convolution filter, which is kind of like a fancy EQ. And that's all about bringing down that mid-bass hump that my room creates. Once the DSP is applied and that mid-bass is pulled down, suddenly now they're starting the image better. I wouldn't say they're kind of exceptional, but based on what you pay for them, I think they're doing a really good job for the money in terms of imaging. Something else that I noticed was that by reducing that kind of mid-bass hump created by my room, what was now more evident was that they actually extend really nicely into these sort of little lower registers of the mid-bass. They're always going to start to roll off at around that sort of 70 to 60 hertz mark, but once you treat them and you fix it, they've got a nice sense of body right the way down to when they do start to roll off. Because the imaging is now tighter and more focused, because we've taken away that kind of mid-bass noise... What I now found was that the imaging was more focused and sharp when I was on axis, and then as I went off axis, I still felt like they performed pretty well. The image does drop away eventually as you start to move further and further off axis, but it's doing a pretty good job thanks to those waveguides I talked about before. These are not going to perform like an omnidirectional or a Bang & Olufsen speaker with the acoustic lens system on it. Those are pretty unique. But in the case of more traditional, forward-firing, two-way speakers, I think the imaging from these is very, very strong. And in fact, with the DSP applied, I think the only issue I can level at them is that I still felt like the treble was a little bit twangy. It just had a slightly unnatural tonality and character to it that made things sound a touch metallic at times. And I'm not saying metallic because it's an aluminium tweeter. It doesn't matter what the tweeter's made of. That was just the character of its sound reminded me. I was listening to some steel string guitar, and I'll tell you the track in a minute. And the steel string guitar just sounded a little bit overly steel, a little bit overly metallic. The twang was emphasised to a point that I wasn't enjoying it as much because it distracted me from everything else going on. But it's a minor gripe for what you're paying. I think they're doing a pretty good job. And to put that further into perspective, let me put them up against a speaker that is vastly more expensive in the Harbeth P3 ESRXD. As I venture more into reviewing speakers on this channel, I'll start to build out more of a library of comparison points. Having other products on hand that I can compare, things like the M105s here with another competitor at the same price point, but for now, the harvests are the only reference point I have. And so what we're really looking at here is how close do these get to a much more expensive speaker rather than a level comparison between two direct competitors so much. 
once again starting off without any DSP applied, and listening to Honey White by Bjorn Burge, the first thing I noticed was that the treble from the harvest, with even without any DSP applied, the treble from the harvest was kind of more articulate and more natural sounding. The same upper bass emphasis was on both speakers because it's the room, and if anything, I think it was worse from the harvest for whatever reason. Having said that, the imaging was still a little bit better on the harvest, despite there being no DSP applied, and despite potentially that mid-bass bloom being even worse. And I also felt like the off-axis performance from the harvest was a little bit stronger too. I felt like the image started off sharper, and then as I went off-axis, it held onto it for at least as long, if not a bit longer, than it did with the M105s. On the other hand though, I was aware that the bass was noticeably leaner from the harvest than it is from the M105s. These definitely had the edge, even with no DSP, these had the edge in terms of presence and body in the weight. Obviously we're taking into account the fact that the room was enhancing the mid-bass, but across the whole bass band, I felt like the M105s were doing a better job at having a better sense of extension and overall presence in the bass. Once I applied my convolution filters to both speakers, what I found then was that the harbors took a clear step ahead in terms of tonality and also technicalities like imaging. I mentioned before that I was listening to steel string guitar and that's what this track Honey White is, and immediately the harbors sounded so much more natural on the steel string guitar. Still very articulate, very crisp, very clean, but a much more natural tonality compared to the metallic sound that I was getting from the M105s. Something else that I found from the harvest was that once we cleaned up that mid-bass, what I could hear was that the bass from the harvest was less one note. Unfortunately, something that I often find about bass reflex speakers, because it does tend to actually enhance certain frequencies only, is that it can result in sound that isn't exactly one note bass, like it is still melodic, but it's not as obviously melodic. The harvest were very musical in their bass, I could follow the bass line more easily, Whereas with the M105s, I was aware of bass, but it didn't draw me in or allow me as easily to follow the bass line along. One area that the M105s proved very strong was that after DSP was applied, I feel like the imaging is almost identical between them. I don't feel like the harvest pull a long way ahead. Probably a little bit ahead, but not far enough that it justifies the price tag for imaging alone. I also feel like the harvest, once the DSP is applied, do handle the off-access performance just a little bit better than the M105s do. With the M105s, as you move left and right, the drop-off where you start to focus the sound and hear all the sound from one speaker only happens a little bit quicker than the harvests. With the harvests, I could move around more and still be enjoying the sound from both speakers with a central image. And so if my wiggle room, for instance, on the M105s was I could move that much, this is just arbitrary amounts that I'm holding up, but let's say it was that much for M105, it might have been that much for the harvests. So just that little bit better from the harvests. And so as I listened to Honey White by Bjorn Burge, what I found was that I think the harvests were consistently the more natural, the more engaging, and the more enjoyable speaker. But having said that, if I was just listening to the M105s on their own, they were fantastic. And this is what I meant at the beginning, that it was a little bit of an uncomfortable comparison in some ways. It has had me second-guessing, particularly when I had just the M105 set up on my desk and I was listening to those all on their own, it had me really wondering if there was any point owning a more expensive speaker. They're that good on their own that this is going to be plenty good enough for most people, particularly if you treat your room and or use some DSP. Having said that, the reason that you might want to spend more is that you do get better sense of separation of things like the vocals from the harvests and other high-quality speakers, I'm sure. You also get a slightly better sense of imaging, particularly if you start to go a little bit off axis. And then as I've already mentioned, the bass is just that little bit more sort of tangible and musical coming from a closed box speaker like the Harbeth compared to a ported speaker like the M105s. And this doesn't mean that closed box is always going to be better than bass reflex, but on this occasion we're talking about an expensive closed box up against a more affordable bass reflex. And so to bring all this to a close, I think the M105s are a really solid speaker. I don't think they're setting the world on fire, they're not a particularly exciting speaker, and I know when I mentioned them in comments recently, some people jumped on and said they found them very boring, and I do get that. They don't bring any kind of warmth or soul to the sound, both in terms of their starting tonality in terms of their tuning, but also in terms of the character of their sound. That slightly metallic treble that they deliver means that they're not a relaxing and fully natural sound. They do remind you sometimes that you're hearing a speaker rather than a live musical performance. On the other hand though, for the price you're paying, they're getting dangerously close to much more expensive speakers. I think for the price you're paying, their performance is very, very good. It's just not to say that you can spend this much money and never get anything better. 
As is often the case in this hobby of ours, you do get improvements as you spend more, but they start to become a bit incremental. And so what I'd say is that if you're in the market for a good, solid, kind of neutral performing speaker, if you're in a position to apply some room treatment and or some DSP, then I think the Revel M105s are a lovely speaker to consider. And on that same note, if there's other speakers around the level of the Revels or the level of the Harvest that you'd like me to get in for review and comparison, then drop me a comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see on the channel next in terms of speaker reviews. At the time that this video comes out, I'll either be just about to go or we'll probably just have finished going to the Melbourne Hi-Fi show from StereoNet. And so hopefully what I'll be able to do there is get a whole lot of new contacts to get access to more speakers. And so I'd love to know where you'd like me to focus my efforts next in terms of sourcing speakers for review. So let me know down in the comments. For now, I hope you found this video useful, helpful and informative. And if you have, I'd love it if you hit the like button and please subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. <laughs>